Today is June 2nd of 2015, and we are just finishing up week 8 post medial patellar luxation surgery with Hank. And this video is a little bit longer, it's about 13 minutes long, just because I'm tying together weeks 6, 7, and 8 exercises. So I'm still doing all the original exercises, as you can see here. I am just doing some passive range of motion. I'm not really pushing or pulling, I'm just, um, when Hank is relaxed and sleeping as we're watching the news at night, I just kind of move his leg up and down, forward and back, just really small movements until he allows me to do bigger movements, bigger range of motion. And then I'll add in circles just to kind of open and release his hip joint. We've added in some new exercises to challenge him more. We're still using the Cavaletti poles, or i.e. my Swiffer wet mop and um, an umbrella, which works fine as a pole. And so we put the Swiffer pole up a little bit higher. It's just resting on two of my chairs, and we put the umbrella just on two shoes, so it's a little bit lower. So he has to step over the umbrella, and he has to walk under the Swiffer. As you can see, um, you see his right rear leg right now, and then once we turn around, you'll see his left leg, the one that we operated on. And uh, the goal is to just to get that deep knee bend. He still wants to turn in a little bit, but he gets better over time, and then he has to step over. Yeah. So this is a great exercise. I also do this underneath our table. It kind of is easier than putting two chairs together. We have these bars on the table that you set your feet on. It's kind of a bar height table. It's a little low, but he does it. So, um, and it just makes my life easier. I don't have to pull out a bunch of props for him to crawl under. So every once in a while, we'll just mix this in throughout the day, just a couple here and there. Hank's physical therapist also recommended that we do what's called dancing, and it's where I stand and hold his two front legs or his torso so that he has to put all of his weight on his back legs and walk forward really slowly, and he will follow as I walk forward. And you can still see that he likes to put a lot of weight into that right leg, but I think this is great improvement that I can even have him put all of that weight on his back two legs. And the physical therapist basically said that a lot of dogs go throughout their lives not even knowing they have back legs and their brain doesn't talk the best of their back legs. They put all their emphasis in their front legs. And so this kind of forces that feedback loop from their brain to their back legs and feet and um, just strengthens their coordination, strengthens their muscles. And so as you can see, I'm going back and he's got to figure out how to walk backwards without relying on his front paws. And this is the very first time that we're doing this, so he's doing really well. We haven't practiced this before I started videoing. Here we're just walking backwards, and Hank knows how to back up, and that, that's a cue that we use often with him before surgery. And um, I thought it would be easier for him here, but for some reason he doesn't want to back up for me, so I'm just helping him out a little bit by putting my hand lightly underneath his belly and just kind of leading him back. And here I just thought I would insert this video clip of Hank walking around on our shiny wood floors. He's three and a half years old, and for some strange reason, at about one year of age, he stopped walking on our wood floors, and he stopped walking on any kind of slippery tile. And this was a challenge for us, because we have all wood floors throughout the house. So I, I talked to many different people, trainers, um, and just different vets, and nobody really had an answer for me. And all of a sudden, we noticed that as he was rehabbing, as he was getting more confident with his left leg, with all the exercises that we're doing, he started walking around on all wood floors. And um, not just our wood floors, but he will now go into different vet clinics and walk everywhere. He will go into different pet food places and walk down aisles, which he went before. So this is a great improvement. He would normally just get somewhere, find a rug, and just stay on the rug and wiggle his butt and wiggle his tail waiting for somebody to come pick him up. 
So we are very happy that he is walking around. And here I just put two shoes down and we're just kind of walking around the shoes. And of course I have a treat leading him, but he wouldn't have done this before surgery. Hank had such a fear of slipping and falling. I felt like he was daily just doing the little Scooby-Doo thing on our wood floors. And so we constantly kept his paws trimmed and nails trimmed, you know, that hair between his toes we would keep clipped and we'd keep his nails nice and short and um, after surgery he started walking around and I flipped his paws up and here's how hairy his paws were and here's how long his nails were and this is normal this is a normal picture of what they usually are so um, gosh he's just that much more confident after surgery of walking across our wood floors with not even having his nails trimmed or that little hair clipped between his paws he's, he's doing great we're just very excited about this. He can actually be a normal dog again. So back to our exercises. Here on our walk, whenever I see a slight slope, a hill, I will take him up and down, kind of drawing an S with him in both directions. So obviously as we go up on his on the right side, his right foot has to lead and then his left foot. So there's a slope, this differentiation between legs. And then I'll turn around and do it the other way coming so his left leg has to lead up the hill first. I try to find a smaller slope so that he doesn't feel like he has to jump up or jump down because I want his legs to unilaterally work one leg and then the other versus just hopping. If the hill is bigger, he has a tendency just to hop down. So he's a little bit confused here why I'm leading him up and down off the, off the grass. But I think this overall is really good for his back legs again just getting that coordination in and here we are um, doing some sit to stands or I like to call it place when I say place he comes right up by my side and sits and we are on a hill again and so when he comes to me he sits down we're going down the hill most of the weight is in his front two legs here and it's, it seems pretty easy for him to do here. Going up the hill is a different story, though. The very first time we did it, he actually gave a little bit of a reaction of pain when he had to go up the hill from a sit. Because obviously when he's facing up the hill, all the weight is going to be in his back two legs. And then so for him to stand and come next to me leading up a hill, it's a lot more weight in his back legs and he needs a lot more strength to push off. And um, he likes to go behind me for some reason. He's supposed to be by my side. But he's doing this pretty well. So, And it's hard to see the hill. But it is a pretty big hill that we're going up. So, And after that very first one, he seemed to do okay after that initial shock of having to really use his back legs. Every once in a while, he'll turn around and look at his back left leg. So I, I don't think it's the most comfortable thing for him to do here. But it definitely builds strength. And then here we go again with some more props. I'm in the yard and I thought I would use some paddles from our kayaks and paddle boards and some of our Adirondack chairs. And I set up these poles again, the Cavaletti poles, but I set them up so that they're uneven. And it's kind of hard to see, but so on one side it's up on the chair and then on the other side it's down on the ground on our driveway. So he has to go over, under, over, under. And so coming back, you'll see he has to go under that first pole. And then he goes over the second pole, which is a little bit bigger than what he's used to going over. So it's kind of funny watching him struggle here a little bit. But he wants to jump, but he can't because there's another pole right up next to his nose. So he has to go slow. And then he'll go under. And then one more, he'll go over. This one's a little bit lower, so he shouldn't have a problem here at all. But one foot at a time, no jumping. And then we'll go back. You'll see his left leg a little bit better in this view. So it's one foot at a time. And then he goes under the next one. And then this is that taller one that he has to go over. He struggles a little bit here because it's a little too tall, but he knows he can't jump. And then under. So you just got to use your imagination with all these props. And here we are again doing that dancing, walking forward, walking backwards. But I'm adding in a little bit of side, lateral, so he has to go right, and then he has to go left. Left is a little harder, because his left leg has to lead, but again, it's just challenging his coordination for his two back legs. His brain has to talk to his back legs to move, to coordinate with me. And I'll just confuse him. I'll go forward, I'll go back, a couple steps here, a couple steps there, just like we're dancing.
I'm still doing his original exercises. I pepper them in, and now that he's kind of used to them in the physical therapy setting, I'm trying to introduce them in his everyday life setting. And so here we are taking a ride down to the lake in our trolley, and his front two paws are up on this on the seat, and his back two legs are down. And it, the trolley's moving, so he has to work on balance. And here he is with a fitness ball. He's never been really big into anything that's larger than him, and this ball definitely is larger than him, and it moves, and it's plastic, and it smells of rubber. And so his initial reaction is to not like this ball. But, you know, with me introducing treats on top of it, he slowly gets used to it. I just have to be really patient with Hank. He's a very timid dog, as I've stated many times, and so patience is key. Once he has a fear of something, it's very hard to get past whatever it is that he's fearful of and to regain that trust. So we just really take our time, and if he's not having it that day, we skip it and we come back to it another day, another time. And um, each little step is a huge step for us. So. And like I said earlier, he's walking more confident on wood floors. He's more confident everywhere, even with this ball, even though he's not, you know, jumping up and grabbing that treat probably like another dog would. This is actually improvement for Hank that he's even near this ball. And it just takes time for him to get up on top of there with his front two paws. He will, I promise. You'll see it here soon. And I, I edited edited this video because it took us a lot longer than what you're seeing here. But I had time and I was feeling patient and so here we are and there he goes and you can see the ball moves a little bit underneath him and like I said I edited the video the first time the ball moved on him he freaked out and ran away and wouldn't come back for like another 15 minutes and now he's back so it just took a little bit of patience and here we are so I'll continue on with my um, videos. We will be into week nine next week, and next time hopefully we will have the x-rays and I'll have more information for all of you and compare our original x-rays before surgery to our x-rays after surgery. So I'm really looking forward to that. Thank you so much and have a great day.